what God called Issachar career. Why would God say, I'm hiring you? And why would God put prophet next to prophet? Because <laughs> Issachar means to hire for money. Because the name was born out of the day when Rachel hired her husband for the night for some mandrakes. So she called the child Issachar saying, I hired, I bought my husband for the night. Why, why would God call our tribe that's called to be prophets, why would he put the name prophet next to the name prophet? Because God is raising a prophetic tribe in 2024 that are incorruptible. Listen, listen, wait, before you clap, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, 2024, I want you to call your prophecy the year of the incorruptibles. And I said, why? And he said, because I am looking for an incorruptible seed. And I, I began to look at it and I go, God, why are you looking? What do you mean you're looking for incorruptible? He said, in 2024, violence is going to increase because corruption is going to increase. And the Bible says in the days of Noah, corruption increased, so violence increased. You're going to see political corruption, personal corruption, familial corruption, just corruption on every level. But, but God calls the born again the incorruptible seed. What does it mean to be incorruptible? It means that God is going to test you with the wealth of Naaman to see if there's a generation that can see great money with a snare attached to it and say no. Let me try that one more time because I don't know if you heard me. That means God is going to test some of you in your jobs who are sitting in your jobs and your bosses are telling you to move a few numbers around. He's going to test you to see, are you truly the sons of Issachar? Because the sons of Issachar are going to be important in 2030. God is going to make them manifest in an unusual way. But God is going to test us in these next few years to see if we're willing to walk Walk away from things that can really help us and our children. And God calls it the incorruptibles. What does it look like? When Abraham returned from the defeat of the kings, and I don't know if you've ever gone to war before, but it's expensive. He had emptied his coffers. He had paid all his men. And the king of Sodom, we all know about the king of Sodom, don't we? The king of Sodom came to him and said to him, we'll give you money. Just give us the people. I feel this in America. We'll give you money to make movies. Just indoctrinate our children with LGBT characters. I feel this word in America. We'll give you money. Just make the church more LGBTQ friendly. Put a rainbow up on the front and change the scriptures around so God is accepting of everybody. We'll give you money. And Abraham said, no. Lest it be said that you made Abraham rich. Hello, everyone. Are you ready to embrace 2024? My new free ebook called Seven Prophetic Secrets for 2024 might just be what you need. In this ebook, I have laid out clearly and have put verbs on my sentences of the things the Lord has told me as a strategic apostolic weapon that you can carry in your hand. Ready to succeed this year? Go to the link now. And we're all clapping now. Because you've never been dealt with the same promise because the kings of Sodom have a lot of money. 
and a lot of popularity and a lot of fame. And he said, no. And the Lord in the next chapter said these words, fear not. <laughs> because if you've never walked away from a large amount of money that you needed to pay all your men, get everybody's accounts settled, get the ministry in order, the books balanced out. If you've never been under that kind of pressure, you'll never hear God say these words, don't be afraid. Oh, Abraham, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Let me tell you what it says in the Hebrew. Fear not, O Abraham. I am your shield and your exceeding great Issachar. In other words, because you've walked away from the money of Sodom, you're on my payment plan now. Oh boy. Because you said no to Sodom, you're about to meet the kings of Melchizedek. Hey, hey, hey. Ah, uh, 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 I wish I had somebody to help me. Because you walked away from the king of Sodom, you're about to meet the king of Salem. And when you meet the king of Salem, your life is about to be blessed. God is getting ready to entrust an incorruptible generation with wealth. Oh, can I give you one more example before I sit down? When we're living in times when the spiritual nourishment will become even more scarce. Amos 8 11 says, Behold, the days are coming when there will be a famine for the word of the Lord. But there is hope, and it begins with you. The Prophetic Masterclass is your gateway to a connection with the voice of God. Imagine being able to receive His wisdom in your everyday life and help others too. During the School of Apostles and Prophets, I will guide you personally through prayer, revelation, and biblical study. Join us online or on site for the 2024 Prophetic Masterclass, The Voice of God is Calling. Will you answer? Naboth had a prime piece of real estate. Prime. Because let me tell you something. If your house is next to the king's palace, your property price is through the roof. He had a prime piece of real estate. And King Ahab, the husband of Jezzy, because you're about to be tested with some Jezebel investors. I hope I'm talking to somebody today. I'm warning you so when it comes, you know what to do. They're about to say, we'll give you money, just change your business plan. We'll give you money, just rework it. We'll give you finances, just do what we tell you to do. You're about to meet Jezebel. And King Ahab built his, and had his palace next to Naboth's real estate. He approached Naboth with a government contract. And you know, government money is ridiculous. He says, I have an endless supply of money for you, for your vineyard. He says, if you let me, I'll give you the money. Whatever you ask for in money for this vineyard, I'll give it to you. Or I'll give you an even better vineyard. And Naboth said no. Some say no. no. Naboth said, I dare not give up the inheritance of my fathers. <laughs> Would it shock you to know that the plot of land in dispute was called Jezreel? Same place where Jezebel's blood was spilt. 
Would it shock you to know that in Deuteronomy, when Joshua was dividing the land, the tribe, the land of Jezreel was given to the tribe of Issachar? Wow. May God help the preachers. So Naboth was saying, my prophetic anointing is not for sale. Listen, God's about to use some of you. You're going to travel all over the world, and people in America are going to pull you to their conferences and their meetings, and they're going to say, we'll give you $10,000, $50,000. Just prophesy what we want you to say. And God is going to entrust a generation to say, my mouth is not for sale. It, it rise to your feet if you're that generation. Rise to your feet if you're that generation that's rising up in this hour to say, I'm not for sale to a Democrat party. I'm not for sale to a Republican party. I'm not for sale to Black Lives Matter or All Lives Matter. My mouth is only the property of my Heavenly Father. Bible says none did more wickedly than Balaam of Baal. He was a false prophet. Why was he a false prophet? Because the Bible says Balak hired him. Can I tell you what it says in the Hebrew? Balak Issachar'd him to prophesy against Israel. America, you're coming into a politically tense time. You're coming into an hour of such division that you won't believe what's about to happen in the next few years. And God is entrusting you with his words. And people are going to come to you and say, could you just prophesy this or just say this or just post this? We'll send you money, just sponsor this. I'm here to tell you today that in America we have Republican prophets. We have Democrat publics, uh, prophets. We have AstraZeneca prophets. We have take this vaccine prophets. And God is looking for the prophets who will rise up against popular consensus to speak the unadulterated, pure, Holy Ghost truth. And listen. God is not looking for a black prophet. He's not looking for a white prophet. We got too many abortion prophets in America. We got too many pro-choice prophets in America who want to pander to their race instead of pandering to the race that God has called them to run. God is looking for a prophetic generation that cannot be bought or sold by a caucus, a party, their jobs, their businesses. So some say, amen, well, thank God. I'm not in any of those political positions, so I can't be bought nor sold. Well, let me talk to some of you who are too comfortable in your jobs to say the truth. God is about to shake your job in 2024. And you may say, why are you prophesying this? Because you can't tell Pharaoh, let my people go and be on his payroll at the same time. You've got to decide today that you would rather be broke and prophesying than rich and quiet. That's the tribe we're raising. Uncompromising. I don't care about my feelings. I don't care about my race. I don't care about my experience. I don't care if I've gone through a divorce. God still hates divorce. Come on, help me preach this. I, I don't care if black people have been mistreated. God still hates vengeance. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. I don't care what popular consensus says. I only care what the world says. If you're that breed, 
Welcome to my tribe. 